Can we hear me now? Thank you yes. for letting me yes. know. God bless you. So you may not see my face because I'll be flipping in and out of the uh, the, the the word of God. Uh, the topic for today, by the grace of God, is healing at the beautiful gates. Healing at the beautiful gates. The topic for today is healing at the beautiful gates. Please let everyone please open their Bible to the book of Acts chapter 3. Healing at the healing at the beautiful gates. Please open your Bible. We are all at home. We should have our Bibles with us. Acts chapter 3, and I will take that quickly from verses 1 to 10. The book of Acts chapter 3. I will look at verses, and that will be our the word for today. That will be our word. The main word we are going to be looking at today by the grace of God. The Bible says, Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the night hour. 3 p.m. is the night hour. The Bible says in verse 2, And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gates of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask arms from those who entered the temple. So it was a regular thing for this man to be laid every day by, I don't know, the conveying taxi in form of people coming every day and put him at the entrance of the, of the, of the temple. The Bible says in verse 3, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for arms. I mean, it was a regular thing for him. When he sees anyone going into the temple, he will ask them to say, can you please bless me? And probably they will give him something. Now, look at verse 4. The Bible says, and fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter looked at him and he said, so he said, look at us. He, what, was, what, what he was doing was he was trying to get his attention. The Bible says, look at us. So he gave them his attention expecting to receive something from them. <laughs> As usual, the Bible says in verse 6, Then Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you. And look at what happened. Silver and gold. You are expecting money, but I don't have the money. What I have is greater and is better than money. That was what Peter was trying to let this guy know. He says, In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Rise up and walk. I speak in the name of Jesus this afternoon. I speak in the name that is above every other name this afternoon. I say in the name of Jesus, whatever it is that you are going through, whatever it is that your home is going through, I don't have pounds to give you. I may not have naira to give you this afternoon, but in the name of Jesus, I speak into your life that you will arise and begin to walk in the name of Jesus. If there's any part of your body that is lame, I speak into your life. I say rise up and walk now. If it is financial, rise up and walk now. If it is spiritual, rise up and walk now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Verse 7 says, and he took him. You know what? When, when Peter said that to this guy, you know there was pandemonium. There was problem in his head. He was confused. There was something they taught us in secondary school. They call this hocus pocus. They call this egregi. He could not place it. He could not understand why they would not give him money. To him at this point in time, money was better for him. But he could not recite, he could not put it in his head to say, why are you, what, what are you talking about? I am expecting silver. I am expecting something called gold from you. But, but you know what? P Peter thought he was wasting time. He knew there was time to everything. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1, verse 7 says, And he took him by the right hand. There's no time to wait, man of God. Rise, the Bible says, and he took him by, his, by the right hand and he lifted him up. The Bible says, what I love most here is, the Bible says immediately. The Bible says, didn't say he went home and came back. Uh -uh. Immediately, his story changed. Immediately, his capacity changed. Immediately, things begin to work for him. The Bible says his feet and his ankle bones receive strength. I pray for you this afternoon. 
I don't know in what area of your life you need strength. I pray for you this afternoon that God Almighty will give you strength. God Almighty will enable you. God Almighty will increase you. God Almighty will multiply you. God Almighty will give you dominion in the mighty name of Jesus. Look at it. Let's look at it. Verse 8 says, So he leaping up. You remember when you have a little boy, one year, two years old, they are not able to walk properly. They will leap. They will, they will, they will, they will try to get up and they will sit down again. So the Bible says this guy, he said in verse 8, so he, leaping up, he was unsteady, stood and walked and entered the temple with him. You know what amazed me was, why did, did, was, why did he not go home? Why did he not run on the streets and say to them, look at me, I can walk now. The first place he got his priority right, the first place he went into was the temple. The Bible says now he entered the temple. He was, he was still walking. He was still leaping. Leaping means that he was unsteady. He, was, he, he didn't grab himself very well. And what was he doing? He was acknowledging the Lord. He was praising God. Look at verse 9. And all the people saw him walking. I'm praising God. They thought he was one of them. They thought he was even born again. They thought he was one of the people in their department. No, they thought because it was a regular Sunday. They, they, they thought because he, he was just at the hour of prayer. He was excited. Now look at verse 10. The Bible says, then they, they now realize. They say, hey, this is an uncommon one. The Bible said, then they knew that it was he who was begging arms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with what? With wonders. They were filled with amazement at what happened to him. They were thinking, no, it can't be. If you look, if I look at verse 11, they had to go out. They had to go out and see, oh, where is this guy that used to take arms? Where is this guy that we have been giving silver to? Where is this guy that we normally give him gold? And they saw that, oh, and it's no more there. I pray for you. Wherever the enemy thought they have left you, they will not meet you there again in the name of Jesus. I pray for your family that God Almighty will bring transformation into your home. Wherever anybody, whatever anybody thought they have done to you, God will undo it in the mighty name of Jesus. You know one thing, when I was studying, one thing that came to my mind is those people, the conveying taxi. I don't know how many people, I, I, but I would have thought probably two people, minimum. If you remember when they were going to break the roof down, there were four people carrying the man that was lame. Let's imagine these two people. He was feeding some two people. Some people were acting as taxi for him. Their thought was never, their prayer will never be, this guy, this guy gets him better. But what do you think will happen to them? When they get to the regular place where they wanted to, they want to pick him up, and, and there's nobody to pick up, and they said, oh, you are looking for this man. He's now in the temple, he's praying. And from that day, his story changed. You know how his story changed? It will now be the people, one, one of the people that I will be giving other people silver and, and gold. So shall be your testimony from this afternoon, in the mighty name of Jesus. You know, I remember a story. I remember a story of a lady. A lady who was about 45 years old or more. And uh, she was in a fellowship back in Nigeria. And um, you know, the, the fellowship just took it upon themselves. And they started praying for this lady. They started praying fervently, intensely for this lady to say, God, ha -ha, she's, still, she's still single. Ah, God, help us, Holy Spirit. Then one day, they were just absorbed into, in, in this in this. <laughs> They were just absorbed into what they were doing. And the Holy Spirit told one of them, the leader, he said, you have been praying for husband for this lady. He said, ask the lady what she wants. You know, when, when they asked the, the lady, to everyone's surprise, they asked her if she was prepared for marriage. You, don't want, you want to know what she said? She said she, she was not sure. She said, I'm not sure. And everybody was dumbfounded to say, sister, you, you are... You are eligible for marriage. You are even you. You are forty-five years old. Marriage should be your priority. And the truth is that if you are not full of expectation, your heart, your if you are not full, if your heart is not full of expectation, you may not receive it. If you are not expecting from God, look at that guy. The Bible said he gave his attention to them, expecting expecting money from them. He was expecting them to give silver. He was expecting them to give gold. But no, he got something better. 
He got something better. It is our month of divine protection. Protection means to prevent. Protection means to, to shield. Prove protection means to build an edge round about. In this month, we will be looking at how we can be healed. And we are looking at physical healing. Spiritual, marital, material, financial, in the name of Jesus. Even, my, even emotional. We are going to be looking at how we can be protected so that there is no evil occurrence, occurrence in our family. We are going to be looking at how we can all be protected from the sicknesses and the diseases of the Egyptians. I pray for you that God will give you all that you need to serve him conveniently in the mighty name of Jesus. I want us to know that this guy that sat at the... At, at, uh, at, the, at the beautiful gate, had been coming to beautiful gate for 40 years. Are you surprised? This guy has been coming to the church in front of the beautiful gate for 40 years, but his life has never been beautiful. No. There's nothing beautiful about him. There's nothing they can write home about him. And when I was studying, you know, you know what I caught? That was Peter's first miracle. That was the first time of it. It was his, the first of his kind for, for, for Peter. That was the first time. So, not that he prepared from home. No, he was even just going to pray. But God intentionally was ready to deliver that guy. May the Lord deliver us this afternoon in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to remind you that it is one of the duties of our Father in heaven to protect and to heal us. So healing is not in the hand of our doctors. When you go to some hospitals in Nigeria, they will say, we only care. God heals. I don't know how many people have seen that sign before. To say, ah, we only care. All that we can do is to care for you, but we cannot heal you. Because God is the only one who, who heals. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, uh, uh, Isaiah 41 verse 10, the book of Isaiah 41 verse 10. The Bible says, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed. Don't be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. May that be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Brethren, you cannot receive healing if you don't know you need healing. And in what area you need that healing. If you are not sure, if you go to your doctor and they say, what is wrong with you? You say, nothing, there's nothing wrong with me. Somebody just said I should just come. Then the doctor will say, then, then I don't need to do anything. Is, do you have any pain in your body? Even though you have pain in your leg. And you say, no, you're just in denial. No, everything is fine. There's nothing, there's no problem. The doctor will absolutely discharge you and say, oh, you can go home. You can go home. Some people will find them in the hospital, they discharge themselves because they thought everything is fine. So no doctor will now place it on them and say, if they say they are fine, they are fine. Let them sign the, the, the I think there's the, the, the paper they normally send. They'll just sign the paper and just go home. You are on your own. So if there's nothing you can pinpoint in your life, if there's no area that you can tell God that I need healing in this area, then probably this message is not for you this afternoon. But I know that for every one of us, there must be one thing we want Jesus Christ to do in our, in our life this afternoon. You know, the Bible says it was the lame man. If you, if, you read, if you read it very well, it was this lame man that called the apostles. Look at it. Go and read it. It was him. Let's, let's look at it. Let's look at it. I think that was it. Look at it. The Bible says in verse 3, Who seen Peter and John about to go in? They were minding their own business. They were look, looking forward to going to the night hour, 3 p.m. in the afternoon, to go and pray. So their concentration should be about going to pray. And now this man called them, said, asked. He said, bro, ask for money. He asked for the money. He was the one that called their attention. As a child of God, God will not come and ask you. You will have to go to God. You will have to, want to go to God and ask God to help you to do it until you start. The Bible says you do not receive because you do not ask. Until you start to ask, until you start to have your time, set a time apart to ask God, then you start to receive your miracles. And I pray that you will receive your miracles in the mighty name of Jesus. Brethren, I pray this afternoon, 
have been looking at this passage so, so well. The man at the beautiful gates. This man, I said he has been there for 40 years. But all he had been receiving is money in form, in form of coins. And he was happy. He was contented. He didn't want anything more. No, if you give, if you had, if, if you had passed, I gave him your bank good, two thousand pounds. No, he, he he wouldn't have asked you or said thank you. He wanted money. He wanted money. He was contented with the position he was. Not that he was really contented, but he was. He, he thought there was nothing good that come that can be better. That situation was the best for him at that time. That situation was it. So far he could, you know, for him, he was contented with the position. So far he could feed himself, pay his house rents because they, they must be, I mean, that time they must be taking him to one place and he would be resting there. So, so far he could pay his, he feed himself, pay his house rents and pay for the wages of the people conveying him to and fro to his office every day because that, that absolutely was his office in front of the church, the beautiful gate. And can you imagine, have you ever thought one day, if somebody from, the, somebody from another community comes and they say they are looking for the church, the beautiful gate, he could tell them and say, ah, look at the church, it's, it's just here. So he knows what is in the church. He knows what they do in the church. There was, there was never a day for him to realize, to say, hmm, at least people are going into this church to pray. At least let me kneel down. Uh, even if you couldn't, let, let me just pray to God. No, that wasn't his priority. His priority was to get enough money. His priority was to get enough money to feed himself. Not even to clothe himself. Feed himself, pay his conveying taxi, and probably pay his rent. That was his, his situation. Brethren, what issues are you going about with? Visible or invisible? But you think you can manage it. You think you are stuck in that situation for life. It happens to someone you, you know, and it is stamina. Mm -mm. That doesn't mean your case will be like that. It even happens to your own father, and it is incurable. But your case is different. You are a different person. The Bible says you are peculiar. You are different. Your case is different. You are not like them. You are a new person in Christ. How come this man was coming daily to the beautiful gates? Just like I said, and his life is not beautiful. His life is nothing to reckon with. His life is not portraying his environment. His life is not showing what goes on in the temple, that right where he sits, seven days a week. The Yorubas will say something. There are people who actually sit in the midst of what? Multiplication. And they are not enjoying it. Are you clouded with so many things that you forgot what is most important? You forgot what your priorities should be. You have forgotten what you are going through. You have forgotten what God could have done in your life. You have forgotten. We did child training this morning. You know when we were doing the child training, I saw myself. You know, because most mothers, we are just clouded. We are just not thinking right. There are things that it only takes God to do. But we are taking it elsewhere. We are asking other people to intervene. You forgot who you are in the Lord. You forgot what is most important to your family uh, or you are carried away due to probably many bills and invoices unpaid. Or you are thinking, hey, Hey, this job is going. Hey, now, so you lost your job as well. Your ah, sister, you lost your job. Ah, hey, I, I told you it's coming. It's not coming to you. You are not ah. Your own job is secured in Christ. And for us, better jobs are even coming in the mighty name of Jesus. For the fact that it's happening to your neighbor doesn't mean it will happen like that to you. Your case is different in the name of Jesus. You cannot be a child of God. And you keep lamenting. No, you cannot. You cannot be praying every day. And you lament after prayer. No. No. Acts chapter 3 verse 5. I want us to look at Acts chapter 3 verse 5. The Bible says, So he gave his attention. He was, what was, it? He was expecting to receive something from them. He gave his attention to the apostles. 
He was expecting to receive at least something. It didn't matter how much anyone gave him. So far, it's money. It, it, there was an expectation. Do you have expectations whenever you come to the presence of God? Whether in your bedroom, whether in the church, whether online, are you just coming to be counted in the number? So say, ah, <laughs> Sister S is there. Yeah, he was at the service today. Yes, he was online today. Mm -mm. Anytime you go to the presence of the Almighty God, don't take it for granted. Go with expectations. If you can write down your prayer points, if you can write down what you want God to do, you place it up to, the, to him. He will do it for you. But anytime you go to the presence of God without expectations, then what will God do? You will be asking, but you are not, you are not sure. You are asking God, God, give me this. God, give me this. But in your heart of hearts, you are not sure if you can do it. You are not sure if we will do it. You are not sure at all. It is your duty, daughter of Zion, man of valor. It is your duty and responsibility to go to the presence of God, expecting that he will do all, not some, but all your requests, because the Bible makes me to understand that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him. Out of them all. He didn't say he delivered him out of some of them. He said he delivered him out of them all. May the Lord deliver your home in the mighty name of Jesus. Are you physically, are you spiritually, maritally, materially, financially, and emotionally sick? Help is here this afternoon for you. I say help is available for you and your home this afternoon in the mighty name of Jesus. Quickly, I want us to see an uncommon case. I want us to see something just before we go. We go this afternoon. Let's open our Bible to the book of Acts chapter 20. The book of Acts chapter 20. Don't forget what we have brought out today. Expectations, giving your attention to God. Your intentions, your hearts, believing God. I will take Acts 28 to 12 quickly. The book of Acts chapter 28 to 12. The Bible says there were, there were many lamps in the upper room. You know the upper room is a sanctuary. The upper room then, is a, it was, I mean, it's a place of prayer. The Bible says where they were gathered together. And in a window sat a certain young man named you. Eutychus, that's his name, Eutychus. This guy, a youth, he sat down by the window or on the window frame who was sinking into a deep sleep in the church during service because Paul was the one ministering. Paul ministered for a very long time because they, he thought they were okay. Look at what happened. The Bible says he was overcome by sleep. And as Paul continued speaking, he fell down from the third story building and was taken up dead. That was what happened. Congrat How can you come to church and die in the church during the service? That will not be our portion in the mighty name of Jesus. During the service, service was going on in the sanctuary at the upper room on the third floor. This boy, a youth boy, Eutychus, he died. He fell from the third building. And he was taken up dead. Look at, but Paul went down. The man of God fell on him and embracing him said, do not trouble yourself. He was telling them, please do not trouble yourself for his life is in, his, in, is in him. That is, it's not dead. Now, when he had come up, had broken, uh, he, said he had broken bread and eaten and talked a long while, even till daybreak, he departed. Verse 12. Verse 12 says, and they brought the young man in after, the fin after they finished the service, in a life, and they were not a little comforted. At least they thank God to say, eh, how, how are we going to say to the people or in the world that somebody died in the church? Will, will anybody want to join uh, our group again? The Bible says the youth was tired. He was not listening to the word of God. Sleeping when hearing the word of God, the co commentary said it's an evil thing. When people are preaching in the church and you are tired, you are sleeping. 
The Bible says, uh, the commentary says, topical Bible says it's an evil thing. A sign, it says it's a sign of low esteem of the word of God. It's a, time, it's a sign that you don't have that in your heart. It says we must do what we can do to prevent being sleeping. Not put ourselves to sleep, but to get our hearts affected with the word we hear. So as, we, as, so as to drive sleep far away. This Bible was telling us that it's telling us that we should do all we can to enjoy God while in church. Not that we come to church and we are sleeping. Let's prepare adequately that we are going to church tomorrow. In conclusion, I want to tell us, let's recap. In conclusion, number one is that we should have faith. The man had faith. He was asking, he was believing in his heart that you are going to give me something anyway. I mean, I'm asking you. I mean, look at them, men of God. Probably they were in suits. You know, in the, I mean, and when I got born again, the men of God, going, even though the suit will be folded at the back, <laughs> they will always be in suits. So just imagine Paul and, uh, and John. Probably they were in suits and he's, he looked at them and said, ah, this one is a better money. Maybe every day when he's going home, he goes home with 100 pounds. And he's looking at today, today should be 500. Look at these men of God. They, they, ah, look at this suit, they must have money. So he had faith. Now he gave his attention to them. When they said they fixed his eyes on them, I said, look at me. He, he, he looked at them and he gave his attention to them. I'm, I'm, and I'm telling us today that we should always give our attention to God. There are other things that will be contending for our attention. There are other issues that will be calling for our attention. But let's always give our attention to the Most High God, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Another point I said is that they were full. This man was full of expectation. He wasn't going to church like any other church. He wasn't going to church like any other God. He wasn't going to the presence of God just like going for it for fun. So that people can know that I'm there. What are you saying? I don't even want to contribute in Sunday school. It's not even necessary for me to talk about this. Nah, at least you know I'm in church today. That's why. Uh -uh. Don't go to the presence of God with the fact that you are just going to be counted up among the number. Go to the presence of God to say, God, I'm trusting you for number one. I'm trusting you for number two. I'm trusting you for number three. Like Gio, we always say, let me be the number one, the one you will answer first, though. Ah, let's, and you back up with the word of God. Say, please, sir, let me be the number one you will answer today. Oh. I have brought three things to you. Please answer me speedily. Go to the presence of God every day with expectation. And I'm talking about full expectations. And God will answer you in the mighty name of Jesus. What else did we say? We spoke about the man got something greater. He got something bigger. He was expecting something small. What am I saying here? When you get to the presence of God with two prayer points, the Bible told us about Solomon. The Bible said that Solomon asked for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. But God said, eh, you, can, you did not ask for the life of your friends. He said, I will give you more. So bring in two prayer points and you have 10 prayer points at home. God will answer them all. Because why? You are full of expectation. Because why? Because he knows that eh, he can trust you with more. More, more, you depend on him. You rely on him fervently. God will answer you in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm. Finally, I want us to know this afternoon that God says that we should not be afraid. Is there no coronavirus? Of course there is coronavirus. Is it not going around? Yes, it is going around. No matter what the situation is, I have the word of God to encourage your heart that God, please believe in God. Trust in the almighty God. God loves you so much. He says, I wish above all things that you prosper. God wants you to prosper. He doesn't want us to, to fail. He doesn't want us to fall. He doesn't want us to be tired. He doesn't want us to faint. He doesn't want us to, be, to falter. God wants us to stand on our feet. God wants to showcase his name in our life. God wants to use you and myself to say, you are children of God and I am living in you. That will be your case in the mighty name of Jesus. I want us to thank the almighty God.